Dr. Riske was one of the primary investigators on the Axiomed Freedom Lumbar Disc in uh, Germany. He was actually working in Germany at the time when they did that study. Um, it was a smaller study of 50 patients. Um, did y'all do any in Switzerland? No, in Switzerland I did it. So it was Germany and Germany. UK? And UK and, uh, yeah, Germany and UK. Just, just Germany and UK, those two locations. 50 patients. 50 patients. You did your study. Excellent results. Uh, do you want to talk about your results? The results show that we could achieve um, a good recovery from the initial uh, scores in, in, uh, in pain and in uh, life quality measured by the Oswestry Disability Score and uh, VIS pain scale uh, according, uh, according to the lumbar back and, and uh, leg pain. So we could reduce it to a level which it, uh, the patients could mention their daily activity living um, and uh, the most of them were absolutely more than 50% were absolutely free of pain. More than 50% free of pain. Yeah. Wow. Um, so one thing that I noticed was that uh, other study and what led me to look at this was, you know, your disability index rating. Yeah, so the disability you know, index is this in 20%. Pre-op. So uh, Dr. Zegers rated me at a 42. That's what he rated me at in his initially. evaluation. 42 initially. initially. Yeah. So maybe in six weeks I'll be down to 30%. Yeah. You know, three months, maybe 20%. Yeah. You know, six months. Uh, I have a feeling I'm going to do better than this, just based on what I feel already. Mm -hmm. uh, the pain, pre-op. Visibility, uh, VAS of low back measured here in this scale. So it was in initially preoperative in, in, uh, in, in it has been uh, 17 in, um, in, a, in average. 17 to start with, in six weeks. And uh, six weeks. It, um, improved to uh, so in about six nearly, weeks the best you can you expected to get after about six weeks is yeah. the lowest pain but it took six months to get the lowest disability in it is, it is, it is, but it's not significant the difference yeah it's very little difference between three months and six months so most people can go back to work after six yeah. months how many what percentage of people were able to go back to work after six months did y'all track that or three months did y'all track that yeah I, I mentioned here it is in the, most of them we could could achieve an, uh, a good recovery more than fifty percent. So more than fifty percent of the patients were able we to go back to free months. of pain. Now, did y'all do? I, I've noticed that uh, over here you can do multiple levels. Did you do one level during the study, yeah, or did you do study, multiple? In this study, only one level. Okay. So what led to the approval of being able to do it at multiple levels here? Because in the U.S. we can only do one on the approvals yeah. over there. It is um, 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 rational that we can also do more level because if a patient has a degenerative disc in two level, we perform also two level. And the results are published also in the literature by several authors, also we and others has reported you were about the uh, long, ti long time results after multi-level uh, okay. TDR. So right now, if you go on Axiomed's website, they have a, a document that, that um, and I don't know if you helped produce this or not, it was a Swiss, the Swiss registry, it talks about the National Swiss registry, that the Axiomed Freedom Disc had the best results out of any other disc in the Swiss Fine yes. Registry. And they had pictures in this, this document that show this Axiomed Freedom just being done at three levels in a study. And it said it was the best result ever. We have compared the results in the Swiss Bank Registry in comparison to other um, devices and we found that the uh, viscoelastic prosthesis, it means the Axiomed and also others like the FH, LP, SP. The ones I have? Okay. It was, have been shown, that has shown the similar results but even better results with the uh, devices from the first the TDR generation. A lot better than those devices. Like, like the ballet, so-called ball and socket prosthesis. Yeah, so the implants I have on me, one of the things that impressed me about the LPESP is when I go back and look at these two numbers, I don't have them up here to compare, but I believe that this low back pain score 
was down here, like a less than a tenth. Yep. So instead of being a you know a one out, or instead of being a, a two or three out of ten with the axiom ed, mm -hmm. it was only a one out of ten on yep. the LPS ESP after yep. I think it was uh, after twelve months. So I'm really hoping I will be back down to a one or ten out of pain after mm -hmm. you know maybe a year or so. That's what I'm hoping it's going to accomplish with me. But I've had some complications a little bit different. Now, one of the things in the study that you noticed and, and made a re recommendation of is the size of the implant. Mm -hmm. um, the size of the implant available and maybe maybe the possibility of making some changes to the surface of this. This has a lot of aggressive fins and has a keel. Do you want to talk about your recommendations on sizes and uh, implants? The sizes has to be adapted to the um, average of uh, human uh, vertebras, but I know also we have to, to, thought, to think about the, um, the um, uh, practical um, um, manufacturing, so it is not too easy to prepare all different sizes. So, but we can adapt the, the sizes in uh, human beings who are greater than the, the Nordic peoples are greater one than Asiatic peoples, so we have to choose, uh, select some different sizes, different sizes for, so. for, for these individuals. And from my point, axiomate, but I'm not involved anymore in this, um, the axiomate prosthesis has a too aggressive surface with these keels and fins. I, I, I feel that they could destroy the bone end plates and leads to a subsiding of the implant, as I have seen in several cases. So, from my point, it has to be changed, but I am not involved in this, in this engineering development. Okay, and one of the things that, that you and I talked about earlier is how much Axiom had spent. Uh, it was gonna, their, their FDA study cost them 200 million, I think is what you refer to, you were involved in that? In the FDA study? For the FDA study. I, I, I guess at about 600 patients. No? 600 so, patients, wow, three, compared three, to 50, 600 patients. 300 with Eximit and 300 with the So they had, to pay, device, no? they had to pay for the older implant and the newer implant to, of 600 patients to do the study to get it approved. It was a um, randomized um, study, you know. With so the FDA, with, they, so they had to compare the old an, and new. With an older implant, it is, which has an approval by the FDA and this new one from Eximit. Okay, so over here in Europe, uh, the whole, like everybody over here, took a 50 patient study, mm -hmm. way less expensive, and it got approved here. The FDA is requiring a 600 patient study, 300 with the old implant, 600 with the new, or 300 with the new, 600 patients all over the U.S. in order to get approved. 200 million dollars. A lot of, I think. A lot of money. I don't know exactly what I, I believe it's a lot of money. Wow, okay. So what happened to Axiomed is the initial investors and companies uh, became insolvent. They ran out of money. They couldn't pay their bills. Um, recently, uh, a company called KSE Inventures, owned by Dr. Leslie or Kingsley Chen, uh, were able to pull some money together and buy the rights from the bank that owned the, 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 the Axiomed owned money to. They were able to buy that. That was back in 2014. Uh, you haven't dealt with Axiomed much since then. You haven't really been communicating with them. Uh, sure, but um, at the moment uh, there doesn't exist an impl any implant, no? so in Europe, no? From you can't get it because so get the, it. when they went insolvent, they they quit making it. I don't know exactly. Um, at the moment, it's just not deliverable. Okay, so you started by using LP ESP instead, if the size was appropriate for the patient. It has some advantages in according to the to the surface, the titanium surface, which is covered with hydroxyapatite, plasma core, plasma spray, and um, also um, only a few pins in okay. the in the in the surface, which are very adaptive to the bony bony layer and. And that they cannot destroy the, the bone layer. Yeah, we've like. actually got a sample over here uh, yeah. of it to what he's talking about. Uh, here's a small one, and here's one implanted. Um, so you can choose these as an example to talk about these. Um, so so you, can, you can see these uh, implant in this model, and uh, through the um, 
glass bone, you can see the five uh, pins or yeah, pins, which only fixed the, the uh, implant in the bony layer and the plasma spray of this device, hydroxyapatite, is able to, um, to induce the bone in growth or on growth on the implant. Okay. And this is a great uh, advantage. Great advantage over the big aggressive fins of the axial yeah, surface. Yes, both the, the small pins and the hydroxyapatite surface. Um, from my point, this is an advantage for bone ingrowth and stabilization of the implant in the and, bone And layer. these, they're available a little bit bigger sizes in the axiomet as well, correct? Um, they, uh, they have different sizes and uh, in most of cases is as adaptive to our individual human beings. It's an, an average uh, diameter, no? so because... So they took an average when they made it? They made it, they measured it in, in, in an average population and uh, decided for these uh, okay. uh, devices. And it is currently, what, 28 by 40 are the dimensions? 28 by 40, yeah. 28 by 40, okay. Mm -hmm. I could have used a little bit bigger one, I think. Maybe, yeah. Uh, maybe. Because my, the distance between here and here on, on me, 40 was good here, but mm -hmm. the distance between here and here, I could mm -hmm. measure 32 mm -hmm. millimeters and the implant was 28, so However, maybe, I mean, it's, it's very close if I could have used a bigger one or not. I saw, I show you the... Uh, the x-rays? No, I show you in the natural bone. Okay. The natural level of bone. You, normally, you have these sponsor bones in the middle, no? In the, in the edges, in the, in the rim, you have a very stable, isn't stable um, ring uh, in, around the cancellous bone, no? So, and therefore, the implant has to be positioned on the stable rim. In, inside the rim? Inside or on the rim. No? So that gives, gives, you can see here, if you have a look here, here this is a rim here. No? Yeah. So, There's and this is rim. very stable. And if the prosthesis is positioned in this um, correct position, then it leads to a stable fixation. No? And wow. this is a normal case. In your okay. case, you have uh, metabolic diseases. Yes, I, I think I might it have is, celiac disease. It is an exception from, from the normal situation. Do you have my x-rays because you, you can explain what happened to me? Yeah. 